My name is Bill Swantner. I'm a certified Master Gardener in the state of Texas. My membership is with the Bear County Master Gardeners Association, and we'd like to welcome you to our YouTube series, All Things Gardening. Since before recorded history, humans have used herbs in their cooking and for medicinal purposes. For example, the ancient Greeks believed that lemon balm would help with depression, thyme would help give you courage, rosemary would help clear your thinking. In this presentation, Master Gardener Grace Emery is going to share with us her passion for growing herbs. Uh, so what we're going to go over is uh, growing the basics. Okay, harvesting and storage, <coughs> recommended varieties. Okay, let's start with this. Uh, this is your test for the day. This is a test, okay? Uh, which one of these are herbs? Raise your hand if you know one. Go ahead. Basil. Basil. Who else? You know, Gloria. <laughs> What's the definition what? of an herb? Peppers, a caspian, yep. Yeah. What else? Hops, probably. Hops is. This is last year's herb of the year, hops. That's why there's so many herb, uh, hops growing in the children's vegetable garden. Okay, what about blackberries? That's next year's, next year's herb of the year. And roses, who would have thought? Yeah. Roses, roses are? Rose hips. Yeah. And they were, um, get this out. I think in uh, 2018, was the, uh, I've lost my little sheet that I had on it. Okay, 2018 uh, was the hops. Uh, basil was in 2008. Blackberries is next year. All the berries are next year. Uh, knockout roses was uh, 11. And uh, jalapeno pe peppers was 17. So, caspican. Who would have thought that peppers of all kinds? Well, basically, you nervous something that changes the food. Changes the flavor of food. So that's the simple explanation of it. Good job, you passed. Yeah, but there are medicinal herbs too. Pardon? There are medicinal yes, herbs. Yes, there are medicinal too. herbs. There are medicinal. You're right. Uh, so why we what is an herb? Uh, they're, they're grown for flavor, fragrance, medicinal qualities, and much more. What's that one in the upper right? What is that? It's beautiful. What is it's it? porridge. Really? It's yummy, actually. Anybody know what this is? Oh, Echinacea. 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 And you all know what this is because we all love it. Ah, oh, they Very good. Very good. Okay, but the flavor of them, the fragrance, or medicinal qualities. Uh, locations. Okay, we have to have, uh, if, you, if you have it, you can have a dedicated herb bed. I like to have mine close to the back of my house, right where I, my kitchen is. Uh, you can put them in vegetable gardens, because remember, we're going to talk about uh, companion gardening. OK, companion gardening. Herbs are the number one for companion gardening. And then landscaping with herbs. There's some land, uh, herbs that are so beautiful. And uh, you can landscape with them. In fact, I have four raised beds and then one large bed, and most of it is herbs. There are some superstars. Now, herb care, uh, sunny, well-drained location, balanced fertilizer, no excessive uh, nitrogen, okay? Uh, you're going to add compost annually, okay? Uh, uh, water about one week, uh, one inch uh, a week, it could be more. If you have uh, drip irrigation, which I do, I, I do about that uh, every day because this is the season. If you don't water it, they're going to go eat it. They're going to look like they're drying on the vine. Okay, okay so uh, then I'm going to mulch, and I'm going to use an organic type mulch, and I'm going to probably put it about this deep on top of my bed, the whole bed. Okay? You don't need more than that. And then uh, gravel for good drainage. If you've got... Now, who's, who's from Floresville? Who's from Floresville here? I know somebody said they were from Floresville. Okay, this lady is from Floor 
first though. How much sand do you have in your in your uh, gardening? Don't you have a lot of sand? Like three feet of sand. Yeah, three feet of sand. Well, this actually uh, herbs like to be drained well. There's some herbs that like dry feet and some herbs that like wet feet, but they all like to be drained, especially the Mediterranean herbs like you know thyme, uh, thyme, sage. Uh, Pardon? Rosemary. Rosemary, yeah, Mediterranean. Mediterranean herbs like, like a dry. <coughs> okay, so who knows what these are? Aphids. Uh, uh, now, they're sticky. They're very sticky. You know, if you've got like this on them, you're gonna, it's going to be green yuck on your fingers. So I like to propel them off with uh, my hose. So that's a good way. Um, less common are mealybug scale and thrips. And did you know that our wonderful sweet basil, the one everybody uses, Genovese basil, wards off thrips, house flies. Yeah? Anything wards off mealybugs? Yeah. Uh, mealybugs, uh, I'm coming to that. I can't remember right off the top of my head. Yeah, I've got one. Uh, you can use uh, insecticide soap, but use it to the point. Remember to read. Read the directions on anything that you're going to put on your garden. Yeah, if you ask David, that's the first thing it says, read the directions. On any directions, it says, read the directions. Read totally. Disease, you can prevent it if you have uh, air circulation and good drainage. Uh, the one thing about disease is if they get too bad, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to uh, take them out. Okay, they can't recover. But... Uh, so you just gotta remember, air, air circulation is good. Like if you have uh, uh, basal plants, they need to be this far away from the other one. Otherwise, they don't get enough circulation and they, they don't do well. Uh, annuals need to be weed free. Anybody know what an annual is? Sure. An annual? Might you have to replant every, every year. One time, every year. Okay, so you have to keep them weed free. Perennials can handle some weed pressure. Because who's got, who's got rosemary? Okay. I don't have to weed that every day. I don't have to take them away. Same thing with sage. Same thing with uh, uh, with mint. They're perennials, so I don't have. They can take some of the pressure of of, uh, of the weeds. So life cycles. There's a. Uh, I didn't. Did you? We have uh, annual, which goes from seed to bloom in one year. There's a place up here if you'd like to see. Uh, so seed to bloom one year. And then the, the biennial, uh, first year produces, uh, grows, but it doesn't produce a seed. Next year it does produce a seed. Uh, and that's, that's a good one to, to have in your garden. Which category does lavender fall into? Lavender is a perennial. Oh, really? It's a perennial. It's a tender perennial. And it, it lasts, a, that means it lives about three years. My rule of thumb is five years. I have one that grew beautifully. I harvested it every year. I loved it. Took care of it. Five years, dead. So I came up to David. I said, I had it. I had it. He goes, was it five years? He said, yes. Five years is it. So. Okay, so the next one. Okay, so getting started. Uh, annuals and biennials. Planting. Direct seeding. Uh, starts, home start or purchased. How many of you uh, start seeds at your home? Yeah, okay. I, I like it as sometimes the label blows off and then I don't know which group is which. So it has to get a little bit bigger until they get a leaf on it before I know which one it is. Okay, saving seed. You've got to harvest the seeds, uh, the seed heads. Uh, don't put them in a plastic bag. Don't put them in a plastic bag. Okay, because sometimes the plastic bag closes up, and then you have a little bit of mold. No, a lot of mold. Uh, so uh, the home store, if you purchase starts, they're usually they're usually about this big, and they're about like that. Okay, they're, they're small. They're not like the four inch pot. They're they're smaller than that. So you're going to harvest the seeds, and I'll, we'll talk. About, you're going to keep them in a dry location. Okay, dry location. You're going to thresh it. So I usually thresh it with a, a fork or maybe a, a something that I can get all the seeds off. But I do it in a bag because I don't want these are little bitty tiny black. So you thresh it off 
and then you uh, store in an airtight contain uh, container. It has to be airtight. Okay, so uh, getting to the perennials. Uh, we like the, anybody know what the white stuff is there? Very good, hormone, that's good. Uh, now, when you're planting direct seed or, and starts, it's not a problem. But when you're doing cuttings and divisions, I really, you know what I really like, my favorite plant is sage. Because you just take it, you bend it over, you put the rock on it, and you've got another plant. <coughs> well, sage is, I, I use a lot of sage. So uh, cuttings, now these are cuttings, okay? Uh, so you want to put them, put them in uh, a little bit of vivarinculite, make sure they're watered, and then once they, they start growing, and you'll see that it's growing. So, uh, and then divisions. Uh, how many of you have a lot, and I mean a lot of, uh, of uh, chives? Mint. A mint. <laughs> Note to self, make sure you put the mint in a pot. It's a lovely overflowing mint. But if it hits the ground, then you got mint everywhere. And this is a time of year that mint doesn't do well. Okay, it doesn't do well. It gets sort of ugly looking. Its best time is in the spring and now back in the fall. So uh, but that's but divisions you can you can divide the plants like uh, like for instance, uh, how many of you have a lot of uh, chives? Chives really grow well here. But if you don't divide them up, then you get chives in your whole garden. And that's a good one to contain as well. But, but on, you can, on the mint, if, I have ugly mint in my yard. So can you dig some of it up, put it in a pot, and will it turn into a nice plant? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They like a little more water. They like water more than uh, uh, some of the other. Uh, but they're, they're good. Yeah, you can put a, put a couple of in there. It'll grow, grow fast. Okay. Plus it's getting, it's also getting uh, cool enough. The plants, the mint likes to cool. Say, my sage just went crazy. It's coming back out beautifully. But before I left, it's not looking so good. Okay, the harvesting of the leaves. Okay, you gotta main, uh, when plant, uh, you gotta be able to maintain its growth. If you cut them off, then it'll, it'll maintain the growth. Uh, and if you don't cut them off, does anybody have a a basil plant this big that looks like it's going to turn into a tree? Yes. <laughs> I was gone for four weeks out of the last six. So you can imagine what my basil looks like. But I planted new basil before I left, so I have a nice basil. Uh, you're going to make sure you do it in the morning. Okay, do it in the morning because that's when, the, when all of the oils are in the leaves. And then make sure you do it before it's flowering. If it's flowering on the top, uh, you need to uh, cut it back, but you definitely need to, uh, um, those leaves at the top are, are really the most uh, flavorful. Major leaf harvest annuals, I'm going to cut off at the ground. Because if it's an annual and it's going to, it's going to freeze, I normally, right before I know it's going to freeze, I'm out making pesto like crazy with my basil. <laughs> but uh, perennials, you're going to cut about one third. And that does make a big difference is when they come back in the spring. And uh, uh, flowers, you're going to open uh, just in the as they open in the morning, uh, in the morning because it's it's much better. Again, it's very flavorful. Uh, we have uh, well, I'm going to talk about it here in a minute, but it's uh, a cardinal red, and it's got red flowers on it, and it's a anise flavored. Uh, uh, it's a bush about like this big, like that. And it's, it's basil, and it is a perennial. But those flowers are wonderful to eat. You know, I, I, I would have had seeds today if I hadn't put it in a bag instead of a regular bag. Oh, well. Now, drying herbs. Uh, this, looks like, this looks like my uh, kitchen. <laughs> That's not my kitchen, but it looks like my kitchen. OK, uh, hay loosely tied that needs ventilation. Okay, uh, if it's leaves that are going to uh, go, I do cheesecloth, and that way the leaves fall into that and you don't have them on the ground. Because the dogs like the smell of uh, prairies, by the way. Um, don't use artificial heat. Don't use the oven. Uh, it takes all the flavor away. So dry them on a uh, 
however, but don't use artificial. It's not good for it. Okay, storage. Looks good, doesn't it? Lavender. Yeah, I love lavender. Mine never normally makes it that far because I'm always making sachets and stuff for people, and my daughters all have migraines, so. Do I give them migraines? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, maybe. But now I give, I give them something to work on the migraines. But airtight in cool, dark location. Okay, so uh, uh, they're stored chopped or whole. Depends on what your intention. Like if, I, my, if I'm going to chop it up like this, I'm going to use it. I can use it to cook with, to make tea with. So I normally do chop mine up, a sachet, whatever. Okay. Um, it's better to chop it up. And mark, mark, yes ma'am, mark the container. How do you separate the rosemary leaf from the stem? I mean, it's just, you just strip it? They have little tools you can buy. Like, uh, really? Some, yeah. Does it say, does it say rosemary tool? Because <laughs> that's what I have to buy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like, is it? Is it a? It might say herbs. Okay. Yeah, my, yeah. I always put the year and the month and what it is on something that I can race off for the next year. Okay, potted herbs. Uh, I like him, huh? Yeah. He's got a really funny head, though, right? Okay, so um, sunny south window. Okay. Potted plants. I have. I bring a lot of my herbs in in the in the fall because I want to have them close to me. I don't want to go in bare feet down to my garden. Uh, you provide the same care as house plants. Okay. They don't need as much water. You know, basically you have to water sometimes twice a day. You can water uh, once a week in the house. Uh, the good ones are basil, chives, mint, parsley, sweet marjoram, and rosemary. These are the ones that I use on a regular basis. Now, I'm, I'm really into uh, a couple of the other ones, but uh, a lot of people have trouble growing them. So I, I don't normally mention those. Uh, so potted herbs. I think it was uh, two years ago when I was uh, in the Herb Society, somebody came to my house and did a three-page spread on me and my inside pots and all my hanging, drying things, and the guy says, do you have anything cooked with herbs? I said, well, I was just going to make some. So I cooked him something. He wanted that recipe in the, in the, in the, the, the San Antonio paper. So I'm a, I'm a celebrity, wow. sort of. Uh, herbs for your garden. So these are the herbs that are actually going to grow in Texas in your garden, OK? These are the herbs that you're going to grow. And if you all want uh, a copy of the slideshow, uh, if you left your email out there, I can have Denise send you a copy of it. OK, because it's a lot of, a lot of information. Yes, ma'am? If, if I have a drive right now, could we do it after this? Yes, ma'am. OK. OK, basil. 60 varieties. That's a lot of basil. Uh, it tastes sweet, citrusy, spicy. Uh, I particularly like Thai basil because that's got a really good kick to it, and I put that in all my Thai food. So it it's roots good. Really easy. Pardon? It roots really easy. It roots really easy. <laughs> I like it. So the culture should be at least 12 inches apart, like I said, about this far apart. Uh, protected from sun uh, in the afternoon, and then well drained raised beds. The key to that well drained raised beds. You're going to harvest when the uh, when flower, did I spell flowering? When flowering begins. Flower, flowing. When flowering, when flowering begins. begins. And then uh, cut four to six inches above the ground. So usually one stem or two stems is going to be plenty for anything that you might need. Would you discard the uh, flowers? I trim <coughs> too many of the flowers off of mine. I, I always trim them. I, let me put it this way. I, I trim 40% of the flowers off because I want their... I want the, uh, the bees and the butterflies and everything else to have some yeah. pollen. So I take about 40%. Basically, I'm talking about if you're going to use it for culinary purposes. Pardon? If you're using it for culinary to cook with, did flowers work as that too, or should you uh, just uh, the flowers? Yes, I, I, I put the, the basil flower, flowers in, in my salads. <laughs> I put the, uh, we have uh, the purple ones, have the purple.
flowers are very, I mean, they're very colorful. That's why I say, in your landscape. Okay, this is what I was talking about, balsamic blooms. Okay, it's uh, in 2017, it became a superstar. Yay. So uh, it's uh, more cold hardy. I would call it a tender perennial because I covered mine in it and it lived for 60 hours straight of, of fr freeze. So uh, the entire plant is edible. These are wonderful. And being in the herb society, I made pesto out of just the flowers. And then I, I swirled it into my other pesto and everybody goes, how'd you do that? They were smelling it like, what did you put in here? You know, uh, But uh, it was uh, very interesting. And I said, you're gonna have, that was the day Chef Dave uh, Tarasas came to the Herb Society and was talking about basil. So I made something creative. The flavor is stronger in this. It, again, it's a little bit of a nice flavor. It's a more sturdy uh, leaf as well. And it, again, it, grow, it doesn't grow like a tree with wood. This is a bush. Okay. Uh, a full sun and medium water. Of course, the, the other one, the, I mean, Thai basil likes light water, but uh, sweet, sweet basil likes a lot of water. Um, but it's a real pretty plant, and I really, it looks good in the garden because it's got color. Uh, who likes cilantro? <laughs> Tis the season for cilantro. Plant it now. It's a winter. It's a cool crop. Cold. C-O-L-E. Uh, cool season annual. Culture so seeds directly. Right out there. However, if I'm using uh, the, the seeds, I usually have to scar it. It's faster, right? You have to do scar scarification on the seeds, which doesn't take that long because I can tell you right now, the seeds grow better if you scar them. They're little seeds. They're coriander, the seed of like, Yeah, they're the seeds. Coriander. Coriander is the seed, and cilantro is the other part. But uh, so so directly February to April, and then September to November, you can you know, you can hard, wait, you're gonna sow in February, harvest in April, because then it gets hot. Wait a minute, sometimes it gets 100 degrees in January. <laughs> well, let's let's put that aside. Harvest in April, September, put it in November harvest, and you should have a good sized plant if you put that in now. You should have good sized lots of. Lots of good leaves. Mine, I, w I came back and I thought, whoa, <laughs> my stuff had grown. I left a 21-year-old in charge. <laughs> okay, just saying. Okay, it likes full or partial sun. Uh, Chef Dave, again, by the way, he's in, he's in Bermuda right now. He's cooking for, uh, over there. So, I mean the uh, Bahamas, Nassau, oh, yeah. Oh. He changed, he's not working at the garden anymore. He's, work, he's working for uh, uh, chef, the, chef, na, nation, the national chefs that goes to, to does uh, this kind of thing, events. So anyway, he uh, he said his mom had one planted underneath their big tree in the front yard, and it never it never died. It was always there. It always was green. It always. I said, okay, what'd you do to it? Because I don't know. It's, it's my grandmother. <laughs> She's the one who did it, the coriander. And, uh, yes. Uh, but I really I really like uh, both coriander as a as a herb and also uh, cilantro. Uh, the, sir, the, the leaves are about four to six inches, so about like that. So you've got a good, healthy leaf. Those are the flowers, and those will turn into the uh, uh, seeds that turn brown. And normally, what I do when I see a, a lot of the brown seeds, I'll take a, a, a trash bag and I'll put it over it, and then cut the bottom off and flip it up so all those seeds go in my trash bag. Actually, I, I use a, a clear trash bag, so I know how many I have. I let my cilantro plant seed itself, and it just keeps on. It's like I have like That's, a huge patch. Yeah, do you hear that? Seeds itself. You miss one seed, you've got another plant or five or yeah. ten. Yeah, it does come back. It seeds itself. That's some hardy plant, right? Peppermint, your nemesis. It's a perennial. It's got purple blooms. <coughs> There's many varieties. Spearmint, chocolate, lemon. Uh, I mean, all orange. 
I can't even tell you to begin. Uh, uh, there's a green apple. There's all sorts. And then uh, the culture is used as starts or divisions. They're really easy to grow. Way too easy to grow. <laughs> uh, they like the rich, the moist soil. They like full sun. This is the wet peat one. They like the wet peat. It's an aggressive spreader. Yes. <laughs> Check. And, and should, you should grow it in pots because it is a very aggressive uh, spreader. I uh, use it for herbal teas and culinary seasonings. I do a lot of Mediterranean cooking. Uh, I use it. I use it for uh, fish sauces and that kind of thing. But uh, I use a lot of my. Uh, I use uh, herbal teas and culinary seasonings a lot. Okay, pineapple sage. And by the way, uh, there are so many sages. I want to say like 900 varieties. Of sages, so uh, this pineapple sage is one of them. Are all it, the sages edible? The flowers? Most of them are. Most. Of them. Yeah, there's some that aren't edible, but uh, they don't sell them saying they're edible. You're gonna find these in the herb part. So uh, the red blooms, uh, it, tender perennial. Okay, this is tender, but it does. Uh, herbal teas, potpourri, attracts hummingbirds and beneficial insects. <coughs> I put uh, pineapple uh, sage in my, I make smoothies with pineapple sage in there, really good, really, really good. So um, sometimes I sometimes I serve them to people. I don't know. Lavender, ah, 39 varieties. Who's got a favorite lavender? Anybody have a favorite lavender? <coughs> I can't tell the difference. Oh, okay. I like the English and the French. The flowers are a little bit different, and the, well, the French one died, so I like the English one better now. <laughs> I actually put another French one in. Okay, again, perennial. It's in the mint family. If you look at it, it's got a square stem, just like mint. Square stem. Uh, average soil, full sun. You don't have to amend, amend, amend. You know, it likes it dry. It deters moths, so you can put it, you can hang it in your closet, and it deters moths, so you can put it in some cheesecloth or, or a sachet and put it in. It sounds like aromatherapy in the closet. It's like aromatherapy in your closet, that's right. Well, mine, mine uh, I, I make uh, uh, pads for the head, and I have, I have my, that in there. Sachets, aromatherapy, uh, uh, it is prone to cotton root rot. Who got to go to the Blanco Lavender Festival this year? Most of, most of her crop died last two years ago from cotton root rot, huh. which means they have to take it all up, and if they get one little spore, you know, so it's much better. Yes, sir. Grace. Yes. Why plant next to a low water plant? Pardon me? It says plant next to a low water plant. Yeah, because you want people with light, dry feet, they want all, I plant mine next to my rosemary at my time because they like dry feet. That's what it is, low water plants. Or I plant it by itself, and I know I'm not going to water it, because the sprinkler doesn't quite, or it doesn't quite reach the, so, uh, but again, deters moss is a good characteristic, and actually helps sleep. Uh, okay, this is actually one of my favorite all-time herbs for different, for different reasons. The flowers, for one, it flowers from now until it gets frozen, probably November. Depends on the air freeze. And uh, even after that, I don't cut it down because I can use the leaves. Remember, I told you it's Mexican tarragon. It tastes just like the expensive stuff that you can't find very often. <laughs> so, uh, well drained soil, full to partial, yeah, shade. Uh, you don't have to cut it back because I use the I use it all year. Uh, it's like tarragon. It's good for potpourri and in crafts. It's pretty. I really love it. Does it bloom? And it gets about this big. Does it bloom all year or just this It blooms time? from, uh, mine's blooming now. I don't exactly know when it started, probably August, because I was gone, like I told you, for the last Late summer. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's pretty, and it's, it's great in crafts and making wreaths, drying them and making wreaths. They stay yellow just like this. If you're lazy and you don't want to go out to the other plants, you can always pick it from your wreath in the house. Get the leaves. Yeah, it's all good. Are the are the flowers edible too? 
Yeah. Or just the leaf? The flowers too. So the whole plant. The whole plant? Yeah. I don't like the stem very well. But I like the leaf. Uh -huh. Okay, here's my favorite. I love dill. Yes. Grace, here in San Antonio, about which months do you have viable plants of dill and cilantro? Uh, mine are viable right now. No, I mean about what's the month range for your growing? Um, well, if we plant them, let's see. I, pl and I planted mine in August, and I'm getting a lot of it right now. The, end, uh, the first week of August, and I'll have I'll have this until it freezes. So I have a pretty good amount of that. But like I said, this is my life season. Tis the season for the little buddies to come by. Do they strip the plants? Pardon? Do the monarchs strip the plants? The larvae strip the plants. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, and then uh, every once in a while. Every once in a while, they'll be, I'll go out down there in the morning, there are about 15 or 16 chrysalis, and I said, oh, I want to, I want to cover it, but I don't. I, let, I, I have competition from birds. So. Yeah. Uh, excellent in culinary sense. A lot of things are with dill. Uh, dill water is essential for good digestion, too. Now, if you ever see me, I, I, I usually have water with an infuser, and I put dill and basil in it. Basil because I like the flavor, dill because it's good for digestion. So, hmm. I like the flavor. That's an essential. I used it as essential wall, but I just put the leaves. I put the leaves in. Oregano, yay! Okay, how many of you like oregano? Mm -hmm. Remember, when you're using fresh, less is more. Otherwise, it's way strong. Uh, there's about 20. It's a perennial, 20 species. Full sun, to partial shade, loves the pot culture, goes Whoa! over the sides of the pot, it's really good. Uh, healing herb, and it's an antidote for poison. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from Crete in the ancient times, so antidote for poison. Uh, it's good in Italian, Mexican, and uh, Greek dishes. Right? Now, does this look like oregano? That's a hedge of oregano at the San Antonio Botanical Culinary Garden. And it's really funny, on the other end, behind the uh, minor lemon, there's a big spot where Chef Dave cuts it off for, for everybody who cooks. I said, please go to a different bush. So anyway, that's, that's a hedge of uh, oregano. OK, chives. Uh, it is a perennial. I love the bloom. I love it in arrangements. I'm also, uh, uh, I like to make arrangements at a, gar at a garden club, too. Uh, where we actually do flower arranging and herb arranging and uh, purple blooms in the spring and uh, it's great. I like to put it next to the yellow yarrow because yarrow just gets so full and then I'll have the, the purple right in front of it. I didn't learn that until uh, over at the San Antonio uh, Botanical they have an herb garden. We did that there and I went, wow, that looks good. So I went home planted some yarrow by my other. Uh, it spreads well, and it can be used as a border. You know, we spend a lot of money on the monkey grass and all that stuff to make a border around. We can eat this edible. <coughs> make it with that, and it spreads fast. Is it liable to escape under your yard? No, it doesn't really. I used to have a lot of wild chives growing in my when I would mow it. The wild ones might, but if you're doing the. Uh, this, the thicker ones, yeah, yeah. They don't. They normally don't spread because I've got them. I've got a. Well, I've got a rock in between the garden and the thing, so that's on the other side of the rock. So, uh, culinary seasoning: uh, the leaves and the blooms are edible. Okay, leaves and blooms, and uh, don't send your husband out to pick it because he comes back with uh, lemongrass. <laughs> I said the short one, not the tall one. <laughs> Okay, lemon balm. Okay, how many of you know, have anybody used lemon balm? Yeah, I love lemon balm, it's one of my faves. Uh, it's a perennial, it likes the rich, the moist, uh, well-drained, uh, full sun, not dill, uh, or light shade. By the way, I did not make this one up. This is what I got, <laughs> already like this. So, uh, did you know that one tablespoon of uh, leaves replaces one tablespoon of lemon juice. So if you if you have lemon balm in your garden and you don't have any lemon, you can still cook with lemon. Uh, lemon balm grows like a weed, literally. Goes big. 
Uh, but it drapes well, like in a pot. It would be nice if you have other things in there. It drapes really well. It's good for a container gardening. In Greece, they called it Heart's Delight. It dispelled depression. So you're, you're getting a uh, history lesson today as well. But a lot of people, there's a lot of additional uses for it. And of course, this is culinary. But uh, my story with lemon balm is I was about eight, and uh, uh, my older sisters had uh, exchange students from France. And they made this thing called um, plum couchon. We lived on apple, apple and fruit farm. They made plum couchon. And my mother always sent me out to the garden to get some of the green leaves right outside the door. So I went out and go get it. But I didn't, I didn't ever see her mash them up and put them in. I got her, her book of recipes after she passed away. The lemon mom. Who knew? So I was, I was even, at, even at a young age, I was picking, picking stuff like that with lemon mom. Rosemary. How many of you have rosemary in your yard? How many of you see rosemary every day? <laughs> OK, uh, evergreen uh, shrub. It's, a rum, uh, it's got very aromatic. Uh, it can be trailing too. There's about I, I don't remember how many, but a lot of varieties of, of this. My favorite kind is barbecue, because uh, the barbecue you can put you can put like the fish or vegetables on the grill, and it absorbs all the oil. Even if you take off the leaves, which you strip them down like that, it still gets a good flavor. That camphor goes everywhere. Uh, full to partial shade, less water, less water, and uh, it's prone to root rot. So if it dies suddenly, and I mean suddenly, one day it's fine, next day it's dead. That's what root rot does. Whoosh, gone. And throw that in the garbage. Pick it up, don't cut it up, and put it in your recycle. Because you'll have cotton root rot everywhere. The softer uh, tips are better uh, and, um, to cook with. You can use any of it, but I use the softer tips. Uh, it is easy to grow all year, it can be dry. Why do you have to dry it if you have it all year? But I like to dry it uh, because sometimes I, you can even freeze it. What I like to do is I, I, when it's real dry, I can make it into a powder, and then the grandkids don't know they're eating yeah. rosemary. Well, There's no already. sticks or anything. Same thing with a lot of the other herbs. OK, you can fr freeze it as well. I freeze it uh, in olive oil, a little bit of olive oil. It, it was worn as a garland back in, and it, uh, for memory and loyalty. And Greek scholars wore it as well because uh, to improve their concentration and their memory. So uh, anybody have any? I, need, I might need it right now. <laughs> I didn't forget the slide. That's good. <laughs> OK, sage, that's another one of my faves. It's a shrubby evergreen perennial. 900 species. Uh, Bees and they love it. it. It likes dry tropical weather. Okay, just so you know. Uh, propagate, you just put the leg on the ground and put a rock on top. Yes, ma'am. Plant fall or early spring. It's good in holiday dressings. How many of you like uh, sage and thyme and that kind of thing in your yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's really good. It's very flavorful with uh, turkey and, and, and dressing. Okay, citronella and lemongrass. How many of you have citronella or lemongrass in your yard? Okay, uh, uh, it repels mosquitoes. Okay, it's got the citronella, citrosa, geranium, pelagorum, citronella. Okay, so it's got citronella in it. Okay, and it's partial shade to full sun. Tender perennial covered with light frost. Now, uh, the next one is the lemongrass, OK? OK, by the way, this is, uh, you can, mine lasted all last year, but then uh, this year was, uh, uh, I, I left it too far out on my deck, so it got a little frozen. So it came back. A geranium was going to come back. You've got to pretty much take it out of the ground and throw it in the garbage for it not to come back. The geraniums are good about that. But the next, the next one is lemongrass. And lemongrass, if you cut it just like you're cutting a, uh, a, um, your regular grass, and it, 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 what I do is when, when it gets to freeze, I cut it back. And then in the spring, it starts growing, and it's wonderful. I usually dig up some of the, the roots and stems so that I can have uh, 
things with lemongrass in, in the fall. Uh, it's frost sensitive, but it grows right back. It's just like any grass. Uh, tolerates the heat and dry conditions. Yes. If you, if you, again, if you're at the culinary garden, right past the tomatoes is a big line of uh, lemongrass. And that keeps all the mosquitoes and stuff out of our garden and out of our hair and out of our bothering us while we're at the garden. So they're really good. Okay, time. Uh, evergreen perennial. Again, again, they like dry feet, dry soil. There's 350 species. Uh, it wars off flea beetles and other pests. Uh, uh, the oil from the thymol is a strong antiseptic. Okay. <coughs> it's thyme is actually in bouquet garni. It's a spice, a French spice. So bouquet garni, and it's in that. And ancient Greeks bathed in it because they thought it was a source of courage. So every once in a while, you might see a little thyme on my hair. So just ignore me. <laughs> If you have any questions about gardening in general or this video specifically, please contact our Bear County Master Gardener helpline. If you'd like more information about becoming a Bear County Master Gardener, then please check out our website. If you'd like to know more about the Texas Master Gardener Association, then please check out our state's website.